Hi, this is Ebody and X from The Candid Frame. Now, one of the things about street photography that we encounter, and it's kind of a, a cliche, is the idea that most of the photographs that people take is of people simply walking down the street. And I thought that, well, how can you avoid doing that all the time, and, and that being the only thing that you photograph? And I think that sometimes I can find more interesting photographs by not simply going to a place where I know there's a lot of street traffic. Because if I think about just street traffic, well, people walking up and down the street may be all that I get. So sometimes I think about finding a place where people are actually doing something. They're involved in some activity or there's the potential for some sort of interaction between people, between objects, something in which they'll be active in something more than simply moving from point A to point B. Here we have a shot by Lasse Pearson. Uh, this was shot back in 1965 on film, so we have no XF data. But even though the image is over 50 years old, it really speaks to this idea of finding a scene where people are actually actively doing something. And this is one of the more common scenes that you can encounter is when a vendor is interacting with a potential customer. Their focus is often on each other. And as a result, they're engaged in conversation and, a, and you can have body language and expressions. And there's a dynamic that's happening there. It could be really ripe for an interesting photograph. And you know, when I find a scene like this, it could be at a, at a fair or on a, on a boardwalk somewhere. I'm always excited about the potential of such opportunities. If you're just on, are on a street where people are just walking up and down the street, there's really not much to sort of keep an eye out for other than, you know, an interesting character or someone's doing something interesting as they're walking down the street. Moments like this where people are communicating with each other and reacting to each other can produce much more interesting photographs. And what I like about this photograph is that that gesture of that man extending his right hand, and it looks like he's holding either a fish or he has a knife in his hand. It's really kind of hard to discern. But that gesture sort of leads us to the woman with the gray hair in the center of the frame. And there's this expression as she's looking at whatever he's holding in his hand. And there's an engagement there. There's a connection there. There's a, there's, even though the, the interaction or the relationship revolves around what he's selling there, there is something going on beyond these people just sort of moving down this, this street. And that's the kind of stuff that I'm always on the hunt for. And what I like about this composition is that everything else in the frame is playing a big role. It's sort of the, the stage on which this little drama is, is occurring. The way that the cobblestone streets uh, sort of lead further and further down the frame, and we see the other human figures um, in, in the scene, and, and we get to see the architecture, and we get a sense of this in terms of uh, a place, and because of the uh, age of the picture, a sense of a, a time, the time in which this photograph was taken. This interaction, even though this was shot back in 1965, this kind of interaction between people is the kind of thing that I'm talking about when, when I refer to the idea of finding places where people are interacting with each other or where they're doing something. Um, you might go to a fair uh, down here in Los Angeles. You can sometimes go to Venice Beach. Um, there's a lot of vendors that are out on the boardwalk selling, selling things. It's kind of difficult in the modern urban world because so much of commerce happens in malls or inside stores. So it's kind of separated from the activity on the street. People may go out shopping, but they'll go into a space, which for street photographers is problematic because that's private property and you can't just simply go in there and start making photographs. So you have to think about locations where this kind of vendor customer relationship is happening more in public. And when you're seeing such opportunities, look for the interactions, sort of try to anticipate when there's going to be an exchange of money or when someone is going to be sampling a particular product, but don't lose sight of the context about where it's happening. And I think that's why, that's what makes this shot really interesting because it's not just about 
the interactions between the two human beings. It's about observing the space and how they exist within that space that makes for an interesting photograph. Here we have another shot by 21 millimeter. If this was shot with a Fujifilm X-Pro1 at 1 4,000th of a second at f1.0 at ISO 6400. Now, I'm not sure exactly what was happening here. It looks like this man is leading these two horses along the shoreline, and this young kid uh, is leaping this gap here. Uh, I suspect that they were moving the horses from wherever they were on the left over to the right, and... They're trying to negotiate the, the space here for what for whatever reason. But there's something going on. They're not just standing there uh, and just existing within that space. It seems like they're doing something with these horses. And that, for me, is kind of interesting. Because if I came upon this scene, I'd be very curious about what's happening. Where are they going? Uh, why are they trying to negotiate around this wall and around this edge of body of water and my curiosity in terms of what's going on tells me that there's going to be some sort of action there's going to be some sort of change in the dynamics of their bodies of the horses um and maybe for this photographer here this leap across the uh, uh, between these two walls was completely unexpected but when it presented itself it it produced a, a really great photograph if I were to come upon this scene with the boy before he made the leap, I would think, well, something's going to happen here. They're obviously not going to just stand there with the horses there forever. They're actually going to be some change of movement, of body language, of action. That, for me, is the kind of potential that I'm talking about. And I would be about, well, let me wait it out. Let me see what happens. And one of the one of the cool things about photographing people when they're actively involved in something is they may notice you there with the camera, but they're so focused on what they're doing, they usually don't care that you're there making photographs. Uh, it's very different from, you know, sticking a camera in front of someone's face as they're walking past you. Uh, a lot of people can be sort of intimidated by the act of, of doing that. But when you're photographing people doing something, people care very little about the fact that you're documenting them. And uh, you can make sort of some interesting photographs. And just the fact that, 21 millimeter here got this great gesture of the boy traversing uh, the gap between those two, wall two walls really makes for an interesting photograph because the horse is static, the man holding the reins is static, the ship is static, but the body language of this boy leaping across that gap provides so much dynamic energy to the shot that really makes it interesting. And sometimes you can see things playing out you know, you can just go, okay, something is going to happen here as a result of, of the fact that there is some sort of activity. And when it happens, all you have to do is sort of be ready for it. And when the moment reveals itself, you can go ahead and make the photograph. But that's, but when you're seeing people that are actively doing something, you can almost be guaranteed that there is going to be some sort of gesture, some sort of action, some sort of body language change that can result in a really interesting photograph. So when you recognize such opportunities, you get your camera ready and it's just a matter of waiting and just making making photographs as the as the entire scene evolves into something that's potentially a really really good image. Here we have a shot by KM Clear. This was shot with Olympus EM5 at 1 400th of a second, f6.3, ISO 400. Now, kids at play is probably one of the most common things that you can ever encounter, uh, whether the kids are playing soccer or they're skateboarding or whatever it is they're, they're doing. Kids are more than likely than anyone to be out on the street doing something. At least that's the way it used to be. Uh, and with video games, God knows that too many kids are locked up. But you know, even here in the U.S., there's a lot of activity out in the, in the streets with kids playing. And you want to be able to take advantage of those moments because the kids, though they may be kind of distracted by the presence of your camera initially, at some point they just forget you and they just continue doing what they're doing. Um, this was shot in Italy, so uh, unlike here in the United States, there's a lot of life that happens out in the, in the streets. So these kids uh, are just really into their game playing. And 
the action of these kids playing and interacting with the ball and with each other is the kind of stuff that I'm talking about. Is because the entire scene of them not only playing with the ball, but the positions relative to each other, the positions relative to the ball are going to be changing every couple of seconds. And so that you could just start making photographs and just trying to find an interesting relationship between the kids, each other, and within the context of the frame. And then as with the first shot here, everything else in the frame plays an important role as well. Because here we see the laundry that's hand, handing, hanging on the balcony and on the clothing line. And we see the signs, we see the doors, we see the shutters on the window. And all of that stuff is giving us a really strong sense of place and time. And even though this is a more recent photograph, it really compares uh, very favorably to the very first shot where... It's an interaction that's being revealed within a scene, within a space. And this shot, even though it was probably taken in within the last year, will be just as timeless as the first shot because it reveals so much about the character of the place. And that, for me, is what really can make street photography really fun and very exciting. And when you're taking a picture of just a scene, I mean, imagine this scene without the kids and the ball at all. It would just be the sort of static scene of the laundry, of the doors and the shutter. And when we go and travel, we probably make a lot of photographs like this. But having the dynamic action of the kids adds a really important ele element to the shot that really, really makes it work. So when you're thinking about, well, where are you going to go this weekend to make photographs? Try to think of a location that has more than just street traffic, of people just moving up and down the street. I think if you start thinking about the choice that you're making in terms of where you're going to photograph, that your photographs are going to be markedly different as a result. Thanks again for joining me. If you want to contribute to the Candor Frame Flickr group, all you need to do is go to Flickr and just ask to be added, and I'll be glad to do so. It's completely, completely free. And if you've never heard of The Candid Frame, The Candid Frame is a podcast, an interview show in which I feature conversations with some of the world's best photographers. Our most recent conversation was with Lucia Grigi, and she is a lifestyle and sports photographer and who specializes in water sports, particularly surfing. And she's just amazing. And her story is just as interesting. So you can check that out by visiting thecandidframe.com or downloading The Candid Frame app. And that gives you access to the over 300 plus interviews we have in our archive. And you'll find links for all of that on the Candid Frame. And if you're in Los Angeles this weekend, I am teaching a photographic workshop on April 8th through the Los Angeles Center of Photography. We still have spaces available. And if you want to check it out, all you have to do is go to lacphoto.org and sign up. All right. Thanks again for joining me. And I'll see you next time.